MK Ultra and not not to get too much away, but it is a very somber film. But <laughs> <laughs> I think that's an understatement. That said, it's very informative, even though it's inspired by a true story. Can, is that one of the reasons why you wanted to take part in this project? That it's it's entertaining, somber, yet it's very informative on what it has to you know say. Um, yes, I think that any story that illuminates how people of power abuse that power in the name of human progress, <laughs> um, I think is a good story to tell because, you know, anything that holds a mirror up to ourselves and shows us bad behavior, you know, I, I, th I think is, is a good thing for us to see. And, you know, uh, <laughs> this continues today. I mean, it, it didn't end in the early 60s with these um, science, quote unquote, scientists. Um, but it's a, it's a little known part of our history. And I think um, stories about what happened um, to these people is are really important. I, we're, we're the same generation. So what's it like being a, in, you're, you're, you're a veteran actor, of course, but what's it like being part of a project that has, you know, Jason Patrick in it? Because I- Veteran we're... actor. I love that you said veteran actor. All right. Now I'm going to, I'm going to put that on my uh, Instagram. Veteran actress. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Chris, yeah, yes. <laughs> but I mean, we grew up yeah, uh, appreciating, appreciating Jason during the eighties and whatnot. And, you know, we're, 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 I guess we have the same kind of taste maybe growing up. So what was it like just being that in that production with such to really good actors like Jason and, and Anson as well. Um, I, you know, Jason was super lovely, very humble, uh, just, you know, kept to himself, did his work, wonderful actor. I didn't work with him that much. I, I just had one scene with him. But Anson I'd known because we did a TV series together um, about 10 years ago called Red Widow, uh, where we played brother and sister-in-law. And he's murdered in the first episode. <laughs> um, and then we sort of, the, the rest of the series is about finding out who killed him. So when we were both attached to this project, we were like, all right, let's see how husband and wife, you know, fits. Let's see if maybe, maybe that fits as nicely as, as a brother and sister-in-law. So it was a very easy rapport between us. Um, and, you know, he's super lovely, wonderful actor. Um, and, yeah, it was, it was, I had a great time. You are a veteran in this business, but so you've seen actually the evolution of television and cinema. That's now true. With, yeah, now with everything, you know, digital on demand, the glut of streaming services, maybe that's, that gives the audience members a lot of options. But for you as an actress, as well as a producer and, and whatnot, is this changing landscape? Do you like what, what you're seeing as far as just the proliferation of content and cinema and television? Are there more opportunities? Is there a downside to all this glut of content? A very good question. Um, I think that the more the more art that's created, the better. Um, I think that streamers are giving, you know, thank God for streamers because I, I, I think it just broadened TV. I mean, I came of age, you know, I came up when it was literally like there was basically four channels, you know, four network channels. And the, the content was very, very mainstream and very tapered and censored and sort of had to fit into a neat, clean box. And I think the streamers have just exploded that. So for the kind of stuff that I like to watch, it's been a, a great thing. You know, the past slew of projects I've been a part of, you know, mini series or limited series that never would have gotten made 10 years ago. So I'm super, super grateful for that. And also, like, as a producer, my husband's a director, you know, there's just a lot more uh, platforms to make independent films. Um, maybe they're not put in theaters so much anymore, but, it, but you know, at least we can watch them on our TVs. So I, I like what I'm seeing. You know, uh, sometimes there's shit, sometimes there's good stuff, you know, hopefully the good stuff rises to the top, but there's also, you know, room for just pure escapism as well. So I'm grateful for the uh, plethora of opportunity that uh, these streamers have handed to us artists. Several years ago, I did. I actually did the press day for Skin. And what was it like, just that process? Oh, really? Yeah. The feature and or, the, or the short? The the actual feature. And uh, you oh, know wow. the director pretty well. He's one of the most well-spoken filmmakers I've ever chatted with during the last 30 years. But I was assuming, oh. how all-encompassing was this experience, you know, for you? Oh, my you? God. It was 10 years of our lives. <laughs> you, <laughs> you know, people watch a two-hour movie. But, like, that took us 10 years to get made. We made the short. The only reason we made the short was because no one wanted to make the feature. You know, we had gotten the rights to the real guy, Brian Widener, the real life guy in 20, 2010, I think. Don't quote me on that, but I think that that, that was 2010. <laughs> and Guy, it took him 
four years to write the script. He wrote it when he was living in Israel. He's Israeli. And no one wanted to make it when he moved to the U.S. They said it was 2016, the summer of 2016. And people said, you know, we just have had eight years of a black president in office. Racism sort of doesn't exist really in the world anymore. You know, <laughs> and so with our tail between our legs, we made this short is kind of a proof of concept. And meanwhile, you know, Trump was elected and the world sort of, you know, spun off its access. And then from the short, we were able to get the feature made. But it was, you know, a decade in the making. Um, but it was a total labor of love for, for me and my husband to, to make both skins. How are you? Feature. How are you able to compose yourself regarding when you're actually speaking and you're waiting and receiving the Oscar. I can't compose myself. When I used to do book reports at, in grade school, how were you able to keep it in check, I guess? Honestly, it was it was so surreal. It's almost like I blacked out. I don't I don't need, I barely even remember it happening. It was so surreal. And you're the, the the theater is pretty small, actually. The Kodak theater is pretty small. You know, you imagine it like when you see it, you know, my whole life I've watched it on TV. So you think it's like, you know, Dodger Stadium or the Staples Center, but it's a pretty small theater and you're just like looking in the front row and 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 you know and I'm with my husband so it's it's a uh... It was it was bizarre. And a moment in one way, I'll never forget for the rest of my life. But in another way, like I barely remember. it. <laughs> so I don't. OK, so it's been a couple of years with what we've all been going through. And um, as a journalist, I'm slowly in going out and actually doing screenings, going to public places to watch movies on your end. What has been the last couple of years like for you and coming out of that and actually embarking and continuing your career as uh, was there a level of uh, stasis or, or or was the momentum always there during the last several years for you as an actress and producer? Well, when we when we all went into lockdown, my husband and I directed a short documentary called Life Unexpected. That was the, like literally the first months of lockdown. We did that. And then there was a short film that we were going to produce uh, the guy wrote that we um we got we, we developed it with producers into a feature and actually we're leaving in two weeks to go shoot the feature. So we were very we were pretty productive during COVID. You know, it was all writing and developing, but we took we took the time like we're just not people that can sit still. <laughs> we have to be juggling and we have two kids like we have to be just juggling constantly 25 projects at the same time. So in terms of seeing things this is really the first time now that we're going into seeing academy screenings and you know we try like two to three times a week we're trying to go to see to it's very hard to see things at home because we have two little kids so we try at least like one to two times a week to go out and see academy screenings now so that's like really that was the biggest thing we missed i could care less about parties all that other stuff it's the movies and seeing them with an audience is what he and i that's how we suffered during uh, the two years of COVID. The uh, two-part question, what, where are you going location-wise in a couple of weeks for that project? And then where can we see, you know, Life Unexpected? That's what, you know, I can, you know, I can send you a link. Oh. Um, it, it's, we, it's Which I will not share, by the way. I will not share. Just well, I'm wondering, I'm wondering, because people, other journalists have told me that they've been able to see it. The publicists on the call right now, I can, I can share the link with them and they can send it to you. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Um, but it's it's played multiple film festivals around the world and then through our distributor, uh, Awat Media. Um, but but I can send it to you. You know, it's a very, very, very personal film, but I, I can send it to you. No problem. Many people have seen it. So Yeah. Is it OK? Do, was it OK doing something so personal and so vulnerable? You know, obviously, you're both very close and you're sharing this creative project, but it's literally taken from your own life. So from the so outside. Did you, see, did you see Life Unexpected? No, I was reading up about it. So it just seems okay, so very okay. raw and real. It is very hardcore. Yeah. <laughs> there's no there's no artifice um, behind it, right? So <laughs> it's, it, was, it seems it scary. Was, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it, it was, you know, there were days where, 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 where I said to Guy, I was like, okay, you edit this piece. I'm going I'm going out on a walk. Like, I, I can't handle, you know, editing it. For, you know, <laughs> that's why there's two of us. But we felt that it was important to share with the world because I would have wanted to see something like that when we were in the thro throes of, you know, uh, our struggles having a family and our struggles work-wise creatively. So um, I felt, you know, you're you're as sick as your secret. So I didn't want to be sick. I, I wanted I wanted to open up it up so we could show other people. 
Um, I'll share it with you. And then if you want to, on your website, if you want to share the link, I, I'm or on your Instagram, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that. I much appreciate it. You know, I remember something years ago, I think this was during the actual TCAs for the office. And I asked Steve Carell about being a dad. And he said, well, the big, the big change is I really don't care if I fail because I'm doing it for, for my family. I have a lot more courage in my life. So this rejection thing and tr- trying to look cool or whatnot, it's, it's pretty much out the window because my life is for <laughs> them. And for you, I, I can't wait to see uh, Life Unexpected, but what, how has it changed for you on a creative level? In, has it really changed drastically in a profound way, or maybe it's still still on same level field? Um, I think that you know when you experience the ebbs and flows of our business, which is much more ebbs, it's <laughs> much more valleys. You know, you're in the valley a lot longer than you're in those peaks. I think coming home to your kids and they, they like force you immediately to be in the present moment. You know, there is like when they, you know, pooped on the floor because they're still struggling with potty training or, you know, they're crying or they're like, you just are thrust into reality. And it it's it's a, it's a tremendous distractor and a, a grounding force having kids. So I think it takes you out of yourself, you know, and your own woes <laughs> really, really quickly, like in one second, you know. Um, I actually can share with you in uh, in our chat right now. Oh, cool. Um, okay, life cool. Unexpected. I can share it with you right yeah. now. Yeah. So go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, no no worries. So final couple of questions. Right off the top of your head, can you name one of your all-time favorite movies? And what is it about this film that resonates with you? Alice Doesn't Live Here Anymore. Wow. It's one of my all-time favorites. Um, and actually, that's like dealing with a, you know, a woman who is – struggling and going through, you know, um, having a career, having a family network is one of my favorite movies, uh, raging bull, which is actually our next project is very inspired by raging bull. (laughs) It's a sports movie kind of ish, (laughs) you know, films from the seventies. Those are, those are films that my husband and I absolutely love. I mean, we just saw blonde. I thought blonde was unbelievable. It's getting a lot of, I I know it has a lot of controversy, but I thought it was really, um, really, really amazing. I, I, I thought it was a real feat in filmmaking. Okay, so I'm glad that you're saying this because I'm avoiding it, but the filmmaker is so talented. Is it if you're really into pure cinema, this is kind of a, a movie to watch, Blonde is, you think? I think that... I think that it is... I think that if you want to be in the headspace of someone who is... Um, Hold on, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just oh, no sending you right now. Like Got it. Second, um, I think that he did an unbelievable job of putting me in the headspace of someone with mental health issues. For me, it was a, a two and a half hour fever dream. I felt like I, even if she, even if that wasn't her. I felt like I got to feel like what it is like to be, to suffer the traumas and indignities of being a woman in the 1960s um, and 50s in our business on top of having mental health issues and um, to be so misunderstood, to be used and abused. It was a fever dream. And I respected that this man dedicated 12, 15 years of his life, um, Andrew Dominic, the director, to telling to giving us sort of just a taste of what it might have been like. I really, really respected him. I thought that this movie was, I, I really appreciated it. I'm so glad. I'm so grateful for filmmakers like him who don't give a fuck about uh, backlash, about stigma, about being canceled. He's like, I am making my art. This is what I, the story I want to tell. Fuck y'all if you don't want to watch it. So don't watch it. That is so awesome. I I'm totally really watching give him. him respect. Did you wow. see it? No, I haven't seen it yet, but uh, you know. Oh my God, you have to see it. Okay, you, it's yeah. a must. You as a critic or as, an, as a reporter, it, it's a must. Yeah. You have to see this film. Yeah. Okay, cool. And final question is, with everything that you have to do with your busy schedule, producer, acting, mother, wife, one day, do you want to actually be the director as of a feature length film or is, is it just too all consuming because you have so many other things to do? Or is, or is that a burning desire for you to actually? I do not have a burning desire. I, I think that I would one day, and, and Guy and I talk about it, maybe with my husband, maybe, maybe we would direct something together. I don't have that burning desire to take something from inception to the very end. I, I see what he does 
um, I, I don't think I have that sort of aesthetic point of view. I w I'm interested in directing because I love working with actors. I, I think that, you know, if he and I were to collaborate on something, which we very well may do, I would sort of take the actors under my wing and he would take the visuals and he would, I do not have a desire to write. I read drafts uh, of, of his and I'm a good bouncer, but, but staring at a blank page, which he can do is a very specific talent. He doesn't have any desire to perform, you know, to inhabit a character. So we're a very good, we're a good team when it comes to that. But but I love taking a story and hiring creatives. For me as a producer, it's it's you know a job that I really love to do. But I I don't have the burning desire on my own from beginning to end um, direct something. And lastly, before I go, there's recommendations there's, from your resume. There's MK Ultra. There's Skin the short. There's Skin the feature. But for our listeners, can you recommend a work of yours, maybe a TV series or film, which you would recommend that you feel does not get enough love and should get a little bit more love? Hmm. I mean, I, I would I would say uh, dope sick, but it gets it's gotten a lot of love. Yeah. <laughs> but I think yeah. I think that the more people in the world that can watch dope sick, the better. I, I think it's just, you know, so important. I think it's such an important topic. You know, watch MK Ultra and then and then and then see the modern day MK Ultra. That is dope sick. How how doctors have used and abused their power, manipulating people for the sake of good. You can see it happening in, in uh, 2022. Yes. Th Jamie, thank you so much for your time. Really excited to see Life Unexpected and really enjoyed MK Ultra, even though it got me really depressed. But thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, Greg. It was a pleasure.